Let's talk about how word order changed in the history of English. In Old English, the subject, object, and verb could go in any order, but nowadays we're limited, except in rare cases, to this order. First subject, then the verb, and then the object. For example, something like, Pat eats bagels. So how did this change happen? How did word order become more rigid, more fixed? And what does that tell us? Let's illustrate this with an example. So in Old English, you could say semanshol, thonakuning, or uh, with a th there. You, or we could say thonakuning sloch seman, or seman thonakuning sloch, or the other three possible permutations. Some of these did occur more frequently than others, but all six were possible orders. And here's the thing, in Old English, all six of them meant that the man was the one who killed someone and the king was the one who got killed. How did listeners in Old English know who did what to whom in a sentence like this? Word order didn't tell them that. Well, in two ways, in this particular sentence, Se indicates that this part is the subject. Seman is the subject, and Thone indicates that Thone Kuning is the object. So they would know that. Another thing that was going on in Old English was endings on words, which in this sentence actually wouldn't have helped them. So let's look at something a bit more complicated. Here we can see that the word kuning could occur in these different forms with different endings, as an example of noun endings. And in this sentence, we can see there's an example of kuninges, meaning of the king. And in other places in the sentence, we have just kuning with no ending on it. So in that case, this is a subject or object where the previous one was of the king. So these endings on nouns was one of the things that listeners in Old English would have been able to notice to figure out who did what to whom in a sentence. Now, how did these endings get lost? This is part of the reason why we end up with more fixed word order in present day English. Well, there was this completely unrelated process where in, uh, let's take dog as an example, hund, hunde, hundes, hundum in Old English, where some of the possibilities there, and in Middle English, they become hund, hund, hundes, hunda. So what's happened here is the unstressed vowel, which happens to be at the end of a word, near the end of a word, changes to an, a little uh sound, or gets lost altogether. Here it changes hundes to hundes, Hundum to Honda, or uh, it may get dropped altogether. So that is dropped. This is how in modern English we end up with just hound or hounds. Those are the only, that hounds, the z in this is the only one that's left. Once this happens, that means that in practice, word endings just aren't really there anymore. And that means that this change in the sound system, some of those vowels changing, leads to a change in the structure of words. The, the word endings aren't there anymore. And that leads to, among other uh, factors that contributed to this, word order becoming more restricted. So everything's related to everything else in a language system. And this is how word order became more restricted in the history of English.